of things I've, I've found is that human beings aren't naturally good at generating timely learning together in action when it's most useful. <coughs> when do we generate it? Possibly at a formal postmortem, three, four months later. Possibly in an unstructured way over lunch, so others don't get the benefit of it. We don't structure our learning. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Even when we do, we do it in these postmortems, right? Two after the fact. Structuring learning into what I call a simple debrief process can keep a team aligned in learning rapidly. One of the best organizations for debriefing, learning quickly, what would you guess one of the best organizations out there is? The military. Specifically, one of the tools they use is called an after action review. We take an action, we get together, what worked, what didn't, because we're going to go back into battle. Two hours later, a day later, we really better know what worked and what didn't. So this rapid iteration cycle, this rapid learning cycle. <clears throat> and the debrief tends to look like this. Five questions. These are pulled right from what the US Army uses in the Army, uh, uh, Army National, National Army Training Center. Uh, very similar to what the Air Force uses, very similar. I have a friend who's a Top Gun pilot to what they use. It's five simple questions, but they are, they're simple, but they're not simplistic. <clears throat> the first, what were we trying to accomplish? That means going in, you have to be clear on what you were trying to accomplish. Sometimes you're not even clear. So getting clear in advance what we were trying to accomplish is critically important. Where did we hit our marks? Where did we miss our marks? What caused our results? So specifically, what actually had us do that? Let's go back and trace. What had us miss or hit our marks? What should we start, stop, or continue doing in the future? Probably not dissimilar from some of the things you've seen, some of the things you've done. The importance here is not knowing. The importance here is doing. What I call the knowing-doing gap. A lot of people know this. Very few do it. To make it successful, everyone, the military does what they call make it nameless and rankless. Anyone can say anything to anyone. My friend actually was in the Top Gun when he was a nugget, which is what they call a new person going into the Navy as a pilot because their wings aren't polished yet. He was in a meeting with a superior planning a flight mission over Bosnia. And he was looking at the commander. And he's, I think he had the map upside down. They had been planning the mission with the map upside down. And he always likes to tell that story because he said, what gave me the confidence was the fact we're always encouraged, no matter who we're talking to, that everyone has a voice. So engendering that sort of learning environment in these is critically important. Also, if you're the leader, make yourself vulnerable. Another great story is I have a colleague who does some of this work. He's, uh, he's an ex-Air Force guy. The big thing he does is walk around and uh, is, is, is go around to organizations and help them pretty much just with the debrief. Got a call from the New York Giants seven games into the season, last season. Need you to come up here and help us with debriefing. He's on the plane, flying up, thinking to himself, this is one of the most elite sports franchises in the world. What could they possibly want to learn from? He gets in the after game and after practice. He was in there for both of them. Uh, meetings with Eli and the offense, Eli Manning and the offense. What do you think he found? What was the quality of the debriefing you think he found? Really, really poor. No one was really talking about specifics they had learned. No one was making themselves vulnerable, saying, here's where I missed this. Uh, here's where I missed this route on the defense. Here's where I missed the tackle. Here's why. And specifically, Eli wasn't making himself vulnerable. And as the leader of the organization, it, he wasn't providing great examples. Pulls Eli aside. He said, the most important thing you can do is make yourself vulnerable. Every game, every practice after that, Eli started off the debriefing sessions saying, here's what I could have done better. And here's where I made a mistake. The team followed suit. After the Super Bowl win, Eli is being uh, interviewed by Damon Tuck, Sports Illustrated. What do you think was the difference between halfway through the season and you winning the Super Bowl? 
Eli Manning says, it was our process of debriefing. You can pull up the Sports Illustrated article. I would start a meeting saying, here's what I needed to improve, and I would ask everyone else to do it. And it changed the way we worked with the team. So that's not a great example of the power debrief. I don't know what it is. Really important, uh, really easy to miss. Make sure you do it.